what's up trainers? So today we have another one by request. Wolf hybrids, what you should know before you attempt to home one. Uh, I say attempt to home one because, uh, and you'll see the general mantra of this video is, it's probably a little bit more than you anticipated. Uh, with that said, and in general, if I was to sum it up um, in a sentence, everything's bigger, everything's more, whether that be an issue, whether that be affection, whether that be attention, whether that be shadowing you, following you around, uh, food aggression, not wanting to be in a kennel. Those are the two uh, primary issues that I have them in for. Um, what I don't get wolf hybrids in for that has been outright aggressive. Now, fact check me, it has been a while since I looked, but I want to say that in the last 100 or so years, I'll fact check myself over here, um, there's only been a handful of deaths by wolves. And when you compare that to, uh, I don't know, vending machines, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, right? Uh, these are flight animals, and every single one that I've ever worked with has acted that way when they first met me. I've never been around a hybrid that has, uh, you know, charged up to the door and overtly been aggressive, like super possessive over the owners. It's never been that. I never see them. It's like their cat. It's like when I go over to your house, and those of you that have worked with me know this, and you're probably laughing right now, like, I want to meet your cat. If I know you have a cat, I need to pet your cat. Uh, it's like that a lot of times. Um, that first time I go over it, if, 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 if the, if he has the ability and I, I usually request that they do, um, I might not see him for the first, for the first time that I'm over there, which is totally normal. And again, it goes back to kind of what I said before, the, the two things going back, uh, that, that I tend to get the most is food aggression, which makes a lot of sense when you find out that a male timber wolf, which the last one that I worked with that was food aggressive, he would, he was a mix with a timber wolf. He was a 80% timber wolf, 20%, I think it was Dutch shepherd or like something crazy. Like why? Um, like somebody had to do that on purpose. I was like, it was like a mad scientist, like a wolf who saw a wolf and a Dutch shepherd and was like, that's a good idea. Like that's crazy. Anyways, so when you think about that, it makes sense, right? This guy can consume this much food. His body is telling him that he's hungry. He needs to eat. He needs to survive. It's not the same relationship. You can't have the same relationship with a wolf hybrid that you will with your other dog. And people that own both will tell you that it's not the same. We are lucky that dogs have been domesticated as long as they have. That's why you're able to do the things that you can do in your house. That's why we're able to work on and we consider issues with these dogs, they, they wouldn't be considered issues a hundred years ago. You would say, you'd be crazy. Like, why would you have your dog inside? Dumb, dumb. Of course he's eating all your food and he's jumping all over you. Like, what are you, nuts, right? So things change as these animals have been domesticated more and more and more. Now I want you to think that whatever the percentage of that hybrid is, has had none of that. Like, none of it. No idea of it. So I like to say, I mean, we do a lot of work with these dogs. We get the vast majority of them to the point where they're living pretty closely to a domesticated dog, like to a T, uh, not much different at all. However, we have to be aware that they're gonna have limitations. And I want you to think of those things, you know, not as limitations, but it's kind of like a sensory problem of a kid, right? We wouldn't simply like put them in a brighter room to help them get used to lights, right? Uh, that's no way to go about that. It takes more time. Uh, we need more patience. And if this is something that you think you want to take on, you really have to get past the novelty of it um, because there's not much past the first day. Uh, it's It can be a long road and it takes a lot of commitment. Um, and if you have found yourself in a situation like this and you are anywhere close to me, I would love to help you out. And um, if you have any more questions or you would like me to go into more detail about this stuff, because I think it's pretty neat. I'm looking around, there's not a lot of information on this stuff. Um, and I think it's really down to who's uh, been fortunate enough to be able to spend time with a lot of these dudes. And, um, and yeah, so if anybody has any more questions or would like to see anything more with these guys, uh, yeah, I would love to share. So as always, uh, you know, uh, you can come to us and uh, with any type of training, we are here to serve all your training needs. Uh, we have grooming, we have daycare, we have boarding, uh, a one-stop shop 
uh, down at Canine Cabana. So come hit us up. And then if you have any questions, please put them below. Uh, any suggestions for the next video, I always love them. And then we'll see you guys in the comments. Later. Bye.